It's been a while. We're back. It has been a while. We're running a little bit, uh, a little bit behind on these, aren't we, mate? Have we missed any YouTube? Uh, I don't think we missed any, have we? No, I don't think we missed any. I think this will have to go out instantly, pretty much, on okay. Sunday. Saturday today. Saturday evening, by the way. 5pm on a Saturday we're recording this, so not saying we work hard or anything, but we do. Yeah. Um, just, just gloating about it, really. But, uh, oh, I don't have time to do stuff. No, you do have time. You just choose not to do work. Um, Go on, what's the intro? Most importantly, though, before we get into the introduction, oh. congratulations, Chef of Wednesday, for getting promoted. To Thank you very much. I, uh, yeah. I feel like, you know, you did a lot of work for it, so uh, you know, it's been, it's been a hard yeah. couple of seasons, but uh, we got yeah. there in the end. But, yeah, um, this this video would have been filmed um, two weeks ago, I think, um, which is, yeah, a, a, a massive disappointment to people. I know people are chomping at the bit. Yeah, for these, for these, but I extended the stay because uh, we did the unthinkable and came from four nil. Never been done. Never before. been done before. Has sure, it? you know. <sighs> you know. Well, not only ninety six points in the league, which highest points ever recorded by anyone that didn't go up automatically. Highest points in Sheffield Wednesday's history. Yeah. Semi final four nil defeat. You know, people were saying, "Oh, they can't do it." Well, they did it, didn't they? We did well, it. Yeah. It I'm just glad that um, Bernie didn't. Um, didn't get the 104 point record that Reading 104, 102 I can't remember which one our record is for the highest points in the championship we get promoted is it Reading, Reading yeah Reading still got it still got it Burnley didn't quite get there but we got relegated to League 1 this, this season yeah, so we've done the old switch we're not going to we're not going to play each other which is frustrating but um, anyway you're not here to listen to us talk about football um, you're here to listen to us talk about how we can help you with your online fitness business because we're down a mic that's what we do um, Mike's been away for quite a while so you can see he's got a He's even paler than usual. I am pale, yeah. But paler Dan's got Dan's been nothing but golfing. I've been out of golf. Um, yeah, out of the golf nothing course. but golfing. No doubt, if he lifts his uh, t-shirt, arms up, any shorts, oh, yeah, there we go. That's the that's the good stuff. That's what everyone's come well, for. Well, you got a white t-shirt on underneath the blue one. <laughs> um, yeah, I am incredibly pale. Um, oh. But yeah, I've been in the UK for uh, for for four weeks. The longest stint back to back I've done um, since I moved out here, nearly three years ago. That's literally because it's Sheffield Wednesday. That's the only literally, reason. Literally, yeah. Extended. So it's anyway, an extender. It's an extender. So today we are talking about why our clients hate us initially when they work with us, our coaches. Um, I mean, it's a bit of a strong, bit strong maybe that, but... Controversial. Um, it's going to be an email heading. That was the email subject line. Why our clients hate working with us. Um, Personality, I, I thought. Well, probably, yeah, because they have to actually speak to us, which is probably frustrating. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's more probably along the lines of... Probably um, will say if you ask him. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask I him. I'm asking him. Yeah. Um, it's more along the lines of the fact that, to be honest, when you when you come and work with us, there is very little um, in the way of templates, done-for-you work, um, shortcuts, because uh, they don't exist, mainly, uh, in case you didn't know that. But also is that I think a lot of coaches, when they start something, they want... Um, they want to have something straight away they can use as like they, they think that what they're missing is a template or they're missing this this secret thing that they just don't have and that we do have and that we're going to give them and then all of a sudden they're going to be exactly where they want to be uh, and it doesn't work like that I mean, it really doesn't work like that unfortunately yeah uh, i think i think it's because other other mentorships kind of do have these things i think um and why do they have them they have them because they know that that's what the client wants. So they know that that's what coaches want. So coaches they sell that. That's yeah. So 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 coaches obviously enjoy the coaching element or should at least. Um, but probably don't like content creation or outreach or um, copywriting because these are all of the things that in in our mind you should be able to do because um, they're part of the job. Mm. You're not just a coach. You're an online coach. So it, you should be able to do them. But some mentors recognize that some, some coaches don't like doing that. So then they create these templates um, as an easy, done-for-you opportunity for just five people. Um, yeah. You know, type type posts and uh, scholarship giveaways and, and all of this stuff. All, all templated stuff, of, of, of course it is. Um, but they're literally just, just tapping into the fact that that's what coaches think that they need or think that they want. So it's very clever from the mentor's perspective. It doesn't necessarily help anything within the client's business. And, you know, it, it takes the client to have been in specific mentorships for three, four months or something and, until they realize that they've had all these templates that have been set up and have redone the branding and done this and, and it's mm. not actually changed anything. Um, and then you, you have to answer the question of, well, when does that end then? If you're relying on somebody to, to do all your content for you or the, the copy or the templates, or whatever, when does that ever stop? Mm. Because what happens when you leave the mentorship? 
So you should, you know, in it's, our mind, be building these skills. Yeah, it's like it's like the you know this, these are the same coaches who say, oh, you don't need a meal plan. You can't follow a meal plan forever. Yeah. <laughs> and you sit there with like head in hands, like, well, why do you want these templates forever? Then why do you want these these things like that, right? And I think part of the reason that again, it, the whole clients hate us thing is that I think it's because initially we make we ask them questions, we make them think, like we ask questions that they haven't thought about before. We get them to go really deep into thinking stuff. And I, I think the coaches get quite disappointed when they realize that there's a huge element in this where it's kind of like internal thinking. It's kind of like looking at yourself, looking at your business, really thinking about what you do enjoy, don't enjoy, creating a business that you want to be, I suppose, leading to a certain degree, right? It's, it's your business. Um, I don't think they like that because you're asking them to look internally, you're asking them to answer these questions that aren't easy to answer because up to this point they haven't answered them. And we know they haven't answered them because they're asking for our help. And we know the help you know, that they need is not templates. It's not done for you stuff. If anything, it's the opposite of that because they've tried all that shit. They've tried mm -hmm. all those free things they've downloaded. They've tried the scripts. And it comes back down to, again, then knowing themselves really, really well, what they're passionate about, what they love, and then knowing their niche inside out. And, you, and, and we're constantly asking them questions. And it's hard. It's hard to think, answer those questions. Like, and again, like I think, I think it stems from maybe coaches think that there's a right or a wrong way to yeah. do things, and there is no right or wrong way, you know. And they will tell you the right way after. I'll tell you um, right. No, yeah. that's a office quote. Um, well, I, I think it, I think it genuinely stems from not wanting to get it wrong. Um, so, so by definition, it means that they think there's a right or wrong. So, so we'll often get this. How would you respond to this text? So our answer mm -hmm. is not to give them like a template back. Our answer is to say, well, how would you, how would you respond to it? And for me, that's good coaching. That, that that's in my mind, that's yeah. good coaching because it's then asking them to look at what they would do, and I'm ha I'm happy to critique it or say oh, I might word it like that, or whatever. That's fine. Yeah. But it, it's almost like this expectation of, well, how would you respond to this? What a, a normal human being yeah. interaction? Yeah. Well, I, I would probably do it different to you, right? Because we're different well, yeah, people, we're exactly. different personalities, yeah. but you can't be wrong so whatever you write write it and it's nine times like it's gonna be right unless you're telling someone to fuck off or whatever like you're gonna answer and you'll say oh yeah hey whatever blah 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 yeah. and it, you're not gonna be a million miles away wrong and I, I think it just comes from this fear of doing things wrong yeah and, and maybe looking at people who are successful and going well I wanna do it exactly how they would do it but again like I said the reason that we're successful is different to why the reason that someone else would be successful it's not you know, not going to be the, the same thing. And we get it in the members group quite a lot. Uh, link below to that if you want. It's always, always below in the, in the, in the description. Um, is it, we'll, like, we'll get a question like that and it will be, oh, I just received this text. Um, how would you guys respond to it? And I always reply in the comment the same thing. How are you going to respond to it? Or how were you thinking of responding to it? Then they give you the response and you go, yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and th again, like you said, that's coaching. It's not saying, oh, here's the template for that. Here's the, here's the thing for that. Here's the resource for that. That isn't coaching. That's not coaching. And, and one of the things that I think that they don't like is that obviously we have a few videos we get them to watch initially, which again, ask, ask them questions. And what we do is we get them then to write notes down. What, so take notes from the video. And I, I always say to people, I say, I want to see the notes you've taken from the video because I want to see what you've taken from it and how it applies to your business. Not copy what me and Mike have said, because that won't help you. It's what have you taken from this video that you're going to then apply to what you do. Some of it will be irrelevant. Some of it won't, won't be necessary. But it's, it's coaching. And, and the reason that we hate calling ourselves mentors in this space is because in my mind, mentorships are just barking orders and giving templates and giving done for you stuff. Because what we actually do is actually mentoring. It is actually coaching. It is actually asking questions. Because I think when you... You need, when you follow a lot of people who are proper mentors, who are big in that space, they ask questions. They don't really give people the answers. They just ask the questions. And then from that, they then go, right, that's probably the right way of doing it. Or maybe think about doing it that way or add that on. And I just find it odd that the words mentoring and coaching stuff have just been twisted and changed mm -hmm. now because, oh, because oh that's not... God. Excited. It's got life of his own, that one. Excited, David. Um, is that that's what you should be doing. Is, it, is it's an internal thing. It's like when, you know, we used to, I used to coach in football and do all that sort of stuff. You used to watch the coaches. They never told the players, this is exactly how you do it. They would say, figure it out. As a team, figure out how you're doing that. A bit like, let's come back to Chef Wednesday, shall we? Topical. Is it's, there would have been some tactics involved, but there's also an element of figuring it out on the pitch when you're 4-0 down. You have to figure it out. There's not much more you can do. It's, and, and that's the thing with good coaching is that it puts people in a position where they have to figure things out for themselves. And that's exactly what 
we do with this and it's exactly what again we used to do with fat loss to a certain degree but more so with this than than that is that with fat loss there is a right and wrong answer pretty much with with you know calories and being in, in calorie deficits or whatever with this it's a little bit more like well ask the question how do you want to do it and sometimes the looks you get back are just so like oh god i've got to do some work yes <laughs> you've got to think so it's interesting that this this has kind of gone off, gone in this in, in this direction so i was actually speaking to my therapist about this two or three weeks ago and we were talking about boundaries in that um i was you know stressed out about um i was texting him too much yeah the amount of, how do i tend to fuck? <laughs> no the amount of the amount of messages that my clients are sending me uh, and i appreciate that there's clients watching this but you know outside of conventional working hours and so on and so forth and and so you know um and the level the levels at which the texts were i.e how do i respond to this or whatever things that myself and, and you would probably never ask anybody and again before i move on to the, that point just just for context when when we've ever been mentored before so for example um suck um helped us out a little bit um, probably going back four year three or four years ago or, or so probably about four years ago now mm. and the level at, at which he mentored us was for example he said you should probably launch group coaching and that was it so me and dan went away designed the group coaching, thought about the modules, booked in a studio, got the videographer, filmed the modules uh, of it. Um, Dan designed the spreadsheets. We set up the Google Drives. Um, we thought about topics, you know, weekly to run it, how we were going to upsell from that, when we were going to run success calls, what success calls were. Um, we did the email um, sequence and, and the launch um, and so on and so forth and then employed coaches within that and built it like, built it like that did the landing pages sales pages or, or outsource them to, to whoever needed to do them whichever expert whatever. so my point being is that it was the seed of you should probably do group coaching okay I'll take that advice and right let's let's do our best version of that then yeah so my point being is that that's the level at which what 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 we were used to expecting and, and obviously we're slightly more hands-on than, than that but I know personally I would never say to somebody how would you respond to this message? Um, but anyway, going back to the therapist thing and why that's important is we're talking about boundaries and so on and so forth. And he was saying, people are looking. He said, what I want you to do is I want you to put yourself in their mindset. So you might be getting frustrated at these levels of messages, but think about why they're asking you the question. And I said, probably because they don't want to do it wrong. He's like, okay, so are they wrong in texting you then? I was like, no no um and it come you know it comes down to boundaries and then he was like but what you shouldn't be doing is you shouldn't be which we don't because i went on to, to uh, i get on to but he was like but what you shouldn't be doing is hand you know holding the hand he said what you should be doing is you should be replying with questions i was like it's funny you say that alex because that's all i ever reply with and i feel like sometimes i've been slightly facetious about it and i used to do it with fat loss clients when they would be like Oh, I overate last night. What should I do today? And I would go, what do you think you should do? And they'd go, go back to normal. I'd go, yeah, there you go. Like, mm -hmm. and I almost feel I'm being facetious about it, but he, he again kind of backed it up. And he was like, no, that's exactly what coaching is. You're asking them to figure it out for themselves and you're the backup there to make sure that they're on the right track. What you shouldn't be doing is holding their hand because that is poor coaching. So in my mind, these templates and so on and so forth and real hand-holding is not actually developing any skills. It's not actually improving them in any way. It's just giving them but, something out of sheer laziness that they think is going to be beneficial. It doesn't actually do anything uh, in terms of moving the business forward or moving the coach forward. So in a year's time, they'll still be the same. Yeah. Well, whereas they, what they'll we're need that person do, even more. That's yeah, it, it, but whereas what we're trying to do with the answer you know re reply with a question or not give them a template or okay if you're going to send emails i'm not going to write you an email for you you're going to write it i don't mind looking over it critiquing it but you're going to learn about copy you're going to go watch these videos you're going to do what what you did and join a group and learn about copywriting that's not included with that what, what mm. we're doing it shouldn't be like if you want to go and learn about that go and learn about it elsewhere like dan did i learned about it through listening to hours and hours of the poor Mark podcast back in the day like it's those things that we would expect that i think sometimes again obviously the the title of this was clickbait about why the haters i don't think they necessarily hate us or at least i would hope not and especially because we kind of do a lot of this in our content anyway to filter those people out but it shouldn't be 
oh, welcome to, to coaching. Right, here's the, the post that you're going to make on, on these days. Here's these templates that look exactly the same as mine. Here's, you know, this scholarship thing or here's my doors are closed post or here's the little swipe through and, hey, my name's Coach Mike and I'm here to help you with... Because that's what everyone does. Like, mm-hmm. instead, it's it's coming up with your own thoughts, your own processes, your own way of doing things, your own style, because that's the thing that can't be replicated and that's the thing that makes you stand out. And do you know what? It's 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 hard as well. Like, I think that's the key thing there is like you're saying is, is those questions you're asking are, are hard ones to answer sometimes as well. Because if you don't know the answer, um, it, it can be difficult. But going back to what you said about working with suck and stuff like that is like... Um, it's it's not a case of like Suk only gave us that to do or he only said this. It was more a case of we were having higher level discussions around where do you want the business to be? What sort of numbers do we need to be at? Where do we want to employ coaches? What do we need in the meantime? It was almost like a bigger picture. Where's this going to be in, in six months? What we work in towards, what we build in towards. And we never needed, like you say, we didn't need, ever need to text him saying, oh, do you respond to this message? It's like, you know, you just crack on. And I think there's this, with coaches, a very short-term view of it. They just look week to week. Mm. They just go, I need to get this client in this week. That one person that's texted me asking about my prices, how do you respond to it? Okay, well, they're not ready to buy from you yet if they've asked that question. Like, so don't worry about it. Maybe in a month's time, they'll, they'll be, they'll be a, a client. And it's like they want to know the exact script to get that person on the phone and buy. And I'm like, well, if you got them on the phone, they probably wouldn't buy as, as well or, or as frequently as the person who doesn't ask you about your prices, for example, in DMs. Um, and and the, the thing for us was always that with this, we, I think, maybe assumed it would be a bit more like that, a bit more high-level stuff, thinking about those sorts of things. And, and maybe it's a little bit less that way because, again, people need more help with the, the minutiae and the, and the things that maybe we just did automatically from, from having each other to, to bounce ideas off. But like you said, it is it, coming back to the, the main point of this, it's that if you are being mentored, you are being coached, I, I think it's important that you recognize whether you're being mentored or coached or whether you're being given, like, templates and resources and the same as everyone else in this in the thing because all our clients get their own individual check-in they get their own individual way of doing things and i said this to a client the other day i was like i don't have all these resources because i can't give them to everyone some people it may be relevant but i was like it might be 20 percent of people that are, that are useful that's useful for same with all our videos it's like not relevant for every single person at every single moment they need to be drip fed in the right order and given to the right way based on your problems and what you're facing right now and i think that that's the thing that I find frustrating is when I hear people coming from other mentorships, I sit there on the phone and I'm like, I know what you're going to say. I know what your problems are. I know that you don't feel listened to. I know that they didn't really take an interest in you and they didn't really seem to know much about your business. I know those things already because every single person that's come has said the same thing. Whereas when we get to a check-in, we know instantly about this, about this coach, where they're at, how many clients they're on, what their overall goal is. I've got some clients who are on 30 who are full. I've got some clients who are on 50 who aren't full because full is down to their personal preference their business, what they want it to look like. I think that's the thing is just make sure that if you are being, being mentored, you're in a mentorship, that it isn't just the same thing everyone's getting, the same templates. Just uploaded a brand new training in the group for everyone. Everyone needs to watch it. No, they don't. Why does everyone need to watch it? Surely they don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> surely, surely they don't. It's like saying, oh, everyone now needs to 2,000 calories a day. Every single one of your clients, well, every single one of them, yeah. It sounds ridiculous when you say it like that. Mm-hmm. It sounds mental. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, everyone's now doing five day a week training plan. Well, all of them, all 50. But again, it, it, it's coaches will believe that because they think that there is a right or wrong. Same as, same as fat loss clients, right? Fat loss clients will think that there's a right exercise or yeah. a right food to eat or time or whatever. When, when obviously we all know that it's not, it, it's going to be different for everybody. And, and that's the question I ask coaches. I say, imagine if a, if a fat loss client said this to you and, it, and I use that example. And I think that's when they go, oh yeah, shit. Again, it's just changing the reference point because it's your business. You go, oh, I don't know anything about it. Or oh, it needs to be done this way. Because when you frame it to something they know a lot about and you go, right, talk, you know, from a fat loss nutrition training point of view, they, they get exactly the same point. They get it. They're like, oh shit, actually, yeah, you're right. I've just been asking the wrong question. I've been asking stupid questions, whatever it is. It's like, it's not, it's not a problem that you ask the question. It's a problem if you ask it again and like you don't learn from, mm-hmm. from answering, asking the same thing over and over again. Um, I think that's, that's one of the biggest things with coaches is just recognizing that Look, it's frustrating at the start. It can be frustrating because you have to think and, you know, you have to look inside. You have to think about what you really want to do. And same with content is it just takes months to get your way of doing it. Mm-hmm. It takes time. Like you're not going to, within three weeks, go, oh, my content's absolutely amazing. It's on fire and that's how you're going to do it forever. It just takes time. It's like time. Sorry, just, uh, just give me a couple minutes to close when you heat up the, 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 the 
Oh, it's too loud. It's too loud, mate. Commanding. Yeah. yeah. Too masculine. That's the problem, mate, isn't it? Powerful. We'll leave we'll that, we'll that bit in. Yeah. <laughs> Always. There's no editing required. Yeah. Mike's powerful. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. Um, I mean, I'm going to fidget my chair in a second, so it's fine. Um, don't know what don't know what my point was going to be there. So. There was no point, probably. There was no point. Yeah. Um, what did you say last? Can't remember either. About clients and fat loss and about how it's the same thing as them. But it's gone now, isn't it? So uh, there we go. Ah, there you go. Yeah, like the expectations. It's almost like the expectations. Like yeah. um, not doing it for three weeks, but doing it for not even three months, but three years. Um, yeah. In three years' time. Like, this is something that I've said to clients is that what's the what's the chances, right, that if you speak to 20 or 30 people a day, you put out a post six or seven times a week, what's the chance that in two years' time you're not further along in the business? Next to no chance. Yeah. There's next to no chance. So do that then. But instead, it's like you've just said, it's such a blinkered view through a keyhole where it's like, I need some kind of tactic that this week gets people in. Mm. And it's almost like, it's so bit part in terms of the strategy where like it's one thing after another after another and you know what you see it in mentorships as well so like you'll see some of the mentors um which i probably can't name can i like let's be honest i can't name them no um but like you'll see one mentor in particular had um a mentoring company and then it's now it's um a school um and it's 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 kind of it, it, it like if well, if that was going really well, well what why, like, change, it? why yeah. change it? And the pricing structure is now different, and like it, it's kind of like begs the question that it it's almost like people are looking for the next thing. Whereas that person who I'm talking about, if they probably just kept doing the basics, then over the time they they probably and again they're not going to take any advice from me. Like, let's be honest, but. At the same time, it's like if you've got something that, that's working, let it work. Um, and I think when you change it up, that's a surefire way of of, of, of either saying it's not working if, if you are a mentor or whatever, or B, if you're a coach, just saying that you're not patient enough. Like, mm-hmm. we're here to put you on the right track. I use the analogy a few times with, with clients. It's like, imagine that there's five train tracks, and at the end of one of these train tracks, there's a station with people that are going to come on. You don't know which one it is, but we can get you on the right train track and we just have to keep going down we don't know the distance or how long it's going to take to get there but if you keep going you'll arrive at the station and the people will come on yeah for sure anyway we'll leave it there it's a long one i think um what's it make sure you like the video if you made it this far oh, um shit, yeah. and then yeah we'll leave it there. Sma- well, smash a like smash the subscribe button no you don't have to do that i know you're not watching just, just none press of, it with your none thumb. bothered just um, press it with we your thumb. i have noticed in the analytics that over 70 percent of you aren't subscribed to this video more probably with yeah, us loads more than that i think yeah um anyway we'll leave it there catch you in a bit wait wait